Hey there guys, how's it going? Welcome to a video I'm going to be giving you my top 6 reasons Advanced Warfare sucked. Now, some of you are thinking this is less reasons than the amount that it rocked, so this means the game is amazing. And some people said, well, if it means that there's more things that make it suck than make it rocked, then that would mean it was a terrible Call of Duty. And in all honesty, uh, that's got no bearing really, I think, on how good the game is or isn't. It's just a number that I came up with based on some of the talking points I had. I could have made it more, I could have made it less, but I think six is a nice number to go in depth about what I want to talk about without making like extra things up just for the sake of it. So these are going to be my six least favorite things about Advanced Warfare, things I think stopped it from being an amazing Call of Duty. If you want to see the top eight reasons I thought this game rocked, there's going to be an annotation on the screen. You can check that out. And overall, I've got to say, before I go into these, like I don't mean to overly bash Advanced Warfare. Overall, I don't think it's one of the best CODs that we've seen. I wouldn't even put it in my top three, but I do think it was a step in the right direction and it was a lot better than ghosts it wasn't a bad attempt by sledgehammer just a few things really from stopping it being like a top tier call of duty franchise game anyway let's get on with the top six reasons that this game sucked First off, number six, and although these are in no particular order, this is the one that I think is maybe the least important, but it's important enough to me for me to put it here in the countdown. And that's the fact that there were no lobby numbers. I really want to know how many people are playing in each lobby in the game. Now, in all honesty, I actually think that they took these out to save potential embarrassment if the player numbers are low. I remember sometimes playing Call of Duty Ghosts. I went to play Cranked, and there were like 20 people playing. It was absolutely ridiculous, but at least it lets me the player know that not really to go into that lobby you're going to find bad connections and you're going to have trouble finding a game so I think it's something that absolutely should be in a multiplayer game I think they can do it I don't think it's overly difficult to implement that and I don't think there's any good reason to not have it in other than to maybe save face when the numbers are low so first reason is the fact there was no lobby numbers making it harder to find games making it more difficult to decide what game mode you want to play Next up, we've got the fact that the score streaks weren't actually that fun. They were a little bit weak. Now, this is a difficult one to actually put into a countdown because I feel although the streaks weren't amazing, if they were like Modern Warfare 2 level, we would all be complaining that they were overpowered. It could have easily been in this countdown. You know, the Advanced Warfare streaks are overpowered. But as they were, they were just a little bit, I don't know, underwhelming, I guess, especially considering how difficult they are to get. I mean, remember back in the old Modern Warfare 2 days, seven kills for a harrier strike and that was a serious streak nine kills for a pave low that was such a good streak and in this game you can get nine kills and end up getting a score streak that practically does nothing especially with all the counters all the places to hide i just think that some of the higher end streaks really just didn't do the job when you got them things like dogs from past call duties were really good would always get you some kills and sometimes some of the high end streaks would do the job but i think too many times in this game when you get the high in streaks they just get you basically nothing it feels like an absolute waste a waste of a, a score streak a waste of a, a pick 13 out of your pick 13 system so overall i don't think too many people were excited about the score streaks in this and people won't be saying oh remember that score streak from advanced warfare that was awesome a little bit underwhelming or i have to say i have got a soft spot for the upgraded assault drone that thing is pretty cool once you get it upgraded Next up, we've got unbalanced weapons in multiplayer. I mean, I could go on a rant for about half an hour talking about the imbalance in guns in Advanced Warfare, which also leads to people using less guns. So it leads to less gun variety. I mean, especially in the early days, did you ever see anything other than a BAL-27? Even now, it's not it's not too different now. I mean, they buffed the ASM-1 a little bit so it could compete in the top tier. But at the beginning of the game, the submachine guns were incredibly weak, like almost all of the submachine guns were a four hit kill i actually think they were all a four hit kill uh, and that just doesn't make any sense especially the slow firing ones they eventually buffed them a bit and i have to say the balance is a bit better now but generally i don't think they quite got it down as well as say a game like black ops 2 did which had amazing gun variety and you could use pretty much any weapon in that game and do a good job this one there was only really a few and if you come up against people with the bow 27 uh you know really good players with a good shot almost impossible 
impossible to beat them with anything else, with a few small exceptions. So overall, I just think that when the game came out, the balance was all over the place. No one was using any variety with the guns. It made it very boring very quickly. For me in a Call of Duty game, to have a lot of different weapons that I can use and can have fun with really adds to the variety, adds to the excitement of when I get camos and stuff. I don't want to do camo challenges with the MK14 because it's just so terrible compared to a bow. Uh, and it really kind of spoils the game experience. It shortens the, length, the lifespan of the game. Now, it is a little bit better now. Some of those weaker weapons are better now. But I think for a game to come out and be so imbalanced for many months is not really right. This game had a three-year dev cycle uh, and they should have known. I mean, did they not even test the submachine guns? I remember how bad they were at the beginning of the game. It was just a complete mess. I didn't want to use them at all, let alone the EPM-3, for example. I mean, does anyone even use that now, now that it's a little better? Not me, that's for sure. I've used it a few times, but it's not that great. So in here at number four, just unbalanced weapon leading to less variety in guns. Next up, we've got the fact that there are supply drop only weapons. Now, I really dislike this idea. And a little bit of a spoiler, supply drops are not going to be in this countdown for reasons the game sucked. I actually don't mind supply drops. I don't even mind weapon variants. Personal opinion, I know everyone in the comment section is going to say, oh yeah, but if you don't have this variant, you're going to be crap. I stick by my statement, if you need a gun variant to play well in this game, you are not good at this game. Stop blaming the guns. I mean, some of the variants are useful, but they all have drawbacks. None of them are super weapons. Maybe the speakeasy, but speakeasy is just a speakeasy, uh, an ASM1 of extended mags. A bow 27 obsidian steed is just a slightly better bow. Like, really, it's not going to get you the kill when the base variant wouldn't have got you the kill, for example. But really, this point is the fact that some of the weapons they introduced you could only get in supply drops. I think that's really unfair, especially considering the advanced supply Supply drops are things that people are going to buy to try and get them. Um, I don't even mind advanced supply drops. That is not in this reasons that the game sucked. Only in this certain circumstance. Where I mean, I think uh, supply drops are too expensive. But I don't think that really made the game suck. I think what did make it suck is the fact that you could not get some of these weapons. I mean, I would just love to buy some of these weapons. But what they did, instead of just letting you either buy the weapon or maybe unlock it with a season pass, you had to gamble to potentially get a weapon, especially once they put loads of loot in the chances of you getting for instance the ak-47 even in 50 pounds worth 100 dollars worth of supply drops was extremely low and i think it's just baiting people into buying more advanced supply drops and you know it's a business model and that's fine but i really think that's sticking it to your community call of duty is a dying court game in a lot of ways i mean it still has a good uh, community like a good sized community compared to some other games but really the people that have stuck by your game and still enjoy it and play it day in and out don't don't punish them by not letting them use the latest gun just because they don't want to gamble, you know, ten hundreds worth of dollars or pounds. So it's not a far supply drops a reason that it sucks for me. It's not even weapon variants. It's the fact that you can only get some of these weapons in supply drops. Yes, you can get them in normal supply drops, but we all know you'd have to play like a, a thousand hours just to even have a slight chance of getting one of them. So this one here is that there are supply drop only guns. Number two now, and number two and number one could be switched around. They're very important things, and I think you guys are going to know what the other one is after I go into this. But number two is exosuits. Now, this is very difficult for me to put into this countdown. Exosuits are extremely fun. They change the way we play Call of Duty. It was a change everyone was asking for. They even, to be fair, increased the skill gap a little bit. Just having some extra movement options increased the skill gap against people who didn't know what to do with the movement. And in a game with such a low skill gap like Call of Duty where you don't get huge bonus multipliers for headshots and so on and there is aim assist an increased skill back gap is good for experienced players but damn did this change Call of Duty for the worse in most people's opinions I would say like every one in ten games maybe I would be like oh the exosuit has really you know helped it's made it a lot more fun but what it is, it made Call of Duty just so chaotic. Not only are we going to have to think about where people are, where they could be, not only are the UAVs quite often not as common in this game, so you don't really know where people are, but they could not only be in front of you, they could be upside, upside down, on top of you, around the side of you, and really, it wasn't even that problem. I mean, that was a major problem. I think the major problem with the extra fast movement 
is it made things so unpredictable that even the best players just could not really get much going. Now this seems a bit weird because I'm sure we've all had some long streaks in Call of Duty but I guess maybe just our expectations of what kind of streaks we're going to be able to go on has just got so high now that if we can't go on like 20 kill streaks we start thinking this isn't fair but one way I don't think they make it fair is just by making it unpredictable. Unpredictability is not fun for a player that plays the game a lot and gets good at the game it's damaging to them and although maybe some of the newer players it might help them out if you're a new player it didn't help them out sometimes they introduce unpredictability into games like this to even the playing field out a little bit between good players and bad players but I definitely don't think this had that effect if you have a scuff controller or obviously any controller with the buttons on back you can just turn into a kangaroo hopping frog mega beast and just double jump everywhere and it makes you so difficult to shoot now you could say well you know just get better at aiming at people okay that's one point and yes get better at aiming at people and get used to movement that's one thing but what that doesn't change is the fact that it means that people can be anywhere at any time and it's just not physically possible to be able to check every single direction up down left right behind you in front of you at all times it just made it too chaotic and some people enjoy the chaos and the people that love advanced warfare there are some real hardcore fans out there that say it's one of the best call of duties they love the chaos they love the randomness for me i'll have to just dip in and out of it and that's one reason that i really struggle to just play this game you know day in day out sometimes i have to give it a bit of a rest for a few days because it's just so crazy i can't always handle that craziness so exosuits it here at number two maybe not for the reasons you thought they are but they're definitely in this countdown So on to me for the number one reason this game sucked. I mean, I said these are in no particular order, but this probably was the main factor, as well with number two, obviously, with exosuits, and that is skill-based matchmaking. If you don't think skill-based matchmaking is in this game, you have not played this game enough and you haven't experimented enough personally on different levels of accounts. Now, to be fair, I do think they keep changing this. They've changed it a little bit every now and then. I think right now there's a little bit less skill-based matchmaking in the game. And I think that's because people are struggling to find games because of the lower player numbers, because the game's been out a while now. But damn, if you had a high prestige account, I mean, me, after a week, I was prestige 13 because we did some marathon stream so i had an extremely high rank account of a good kd around 1.7 or 1.8 you would have such trouble like in lobbies it was so competitive and i understand new if they get new players in the game they don't want them to get absolutely demolished by good players and don't get me wrong i'm not even saying like a lot of people might think that as a you know quote unquote good player or an experienced player i want to just demolish noobs all day that's not really what i want but when you take out the idea of never getting that dream lobby, I mean, sometimes we'll play Call of Duty, we play for an evening, and then there'll be that one lobby where everyone is just a complete thumbless wonder. And you would get all your streaks, you might get your nuke, your Moab, your DNA, or whatever, and it was just the most fun, you know, it made the whole night worthwhile just getting that one lobby of absolute, like, noobs, I suppose is how you could say it, and just having fun with that. And if that feels like that is not in the game, and if you've got a high rank count and you play a lot in this game, you will know what I'm talking about. If just every single game, every game mode is just so competitive, just, you know, everyone is not even experimenting with weapons. It's nothing but bows, nothing but ASM1s, nothing but strafing, boost jumping. It just gets you, it drags you down, and it's just like, God, can I even get a break from one game? Like, I like playing competitively sometimes, and obviously I play aggressively in the game I try and do my best and I can't blame other people for doing that even the experienced ones obviously although it would be nice to see more people experiment a little bit with the weapons um, but it's it just drains you and that really seeps the fun out of Call of Duty for me Call of Duty is a fun arcadey game that you play with your friends and I know they want to go into competitive gaming but for me Call of Duty is still not a solid competitive game and until they put some kind of more solid rules in some uh, maybe longer term things in like playing on PC for instance or even my suggestion from a few months ago having a completely different release on PC that they call Call of Duty competitive and then working on that and improving it like in the other PC competitive games they don't change everything every year they work on what they've got and make it competitive and I think that's what they need to do 
So for me, Call of Duty isn't a competitive experience. I mean, I like the occasional competitive experience, might jump into rank play. But overall, if you turn the Call of Duty into that, it kills the game for me. It killed off a huge amount of the community and it is doing so and will continue to do so if they keep pushing competitive as the main thing for public players. And uh, I just kind of fear a little bit for Call of Duty as a fun, casual, arcadey game. If that's the way it's going, who knows? I mean, I think it will put even more people off and skill-based matchmaking in this game definitely put a lot of people off. Like I say, if you don't believe me, just make a new account and start playing. See what kind of people you come up against. Anyway, thanks for making it to the end of this video, guys. I could have gone on for absolute hours about all this stuff. I see the videos getting up to like nearly 15 minutes. I'm thinking, damn, I better actually shut up. But I've got so much to say about it. I played so much of this game. I absolutely love the Call of Duty franchise as, as a whole. Like, I've had so much fun over the years. I love to see it get better. I hate to see things that I think, in my opinion, make it worse. But I also understand that things that I think suck, other people might think are great about the game. You know, the supply drop weapons and whatever. And people absolutely love the exosuits and all that kind of stuff so it's all just personal opinion obviously this is a matter of fact you know i'm not uh, in a court of law here having to give biased and unbiased opinions on whatever but anyway i better round this up <laughs> i've been waffling on for absolute ages now thanks for making it to the end of the video uh, i'm gonna have a secret word for any of you that got to the end of the video i really appreciate you guys hanging around to the end put the word warfare in your comment and know that you are one of the people who watch all the way to the end massive shout outs to you guys really appreciate that support and of course if you want to see the top eight reasons i thought this game rocked there's an annotation on screen right now. So that's it for now, guys. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you all next time.